Welcome to Whispers to a Bride, where we talk about the stuff no one else is talking about. We are going deep on the emotional aspects of getting married, the stress, drama, and turbulence that affects your own sense of identity and your closest relationships. We are talking about what it means to be a bride and how to navigate the sacred time with more grace and ease. I'm your host, Kara Gassabe. As a life coach and therapist, I'm going to be sharing super practical tips so that you can not only rise to the occasion of your wedding, but also your life. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I am Kara, your host. This is Whispers to a Bride. And this episode is called You Can't Get It Right. I know, not exactly the uplifting, encouraging advice that you have come to expect from your favorite bridal coach. But here's the thing. I really need brides to hear me on this because this is true about your wedding and it's true about your life. You can't get it right because you can't get it wrong. It's not you can't get it right because you're not good enough, you're not trying hard enough, you don't have enough money, you haven't lost enough weight, you don't have the right mother-in-law. That's not why you can't get it right. It's you can't get it right because you can't get it wrong because this whole binary of getting your wedding right is the problem. You're not the problem. That framework is the problem. That way of thinking is the problem. And we really got to loosen up. And I think that it's one of those things too where social media is so beautiful in that it is so expansive and really lets us see lots of cool ideas and lots of different approaches, but it also can set us up to feel like we've got to get it right. We've got to be like that. We've got to live up to some standard that has been laid out for us in HD color and tons of likes and shares and all that stuff. And then we strive for that. We make that the goal. And then we're just going to like not get it right if it doesn't turn out like that. Or you see where I'm going and you do this in your own head. And I just, I really, today I'm just feeling like super ranty. We got to understand our wedding is not a test. This is not a test that you can get right or wrong. And for so many of our more type A girls, it can feel like a test. It can feel like, okay, I've got this money. I've got this occasion. I've got this love story. I've got these friends. I've got this family. Like we must optimize and then capitalize and express and experience and capture and share and then sit back and judge. And That's the part that we've really got to press pause and decide if that's really how we want to do this. Because when we treat our wedding or our life like it is something to be accomplished, like it is something to get right, like it is something to show off and get dopamine hits of approval and jealousy and excitement from other people, right? When we're doing it for that reason, when we're doing it for that reason, we're just, we're setting ourselves up for just this endless cycle of dissatisfaction and regret and let down and confusion and just a distancing from our own true nature, from our own sense of purpose and peace and gratitude and joy, right? When we set the whole thing up to be a test and we set the whole thing up as something to like do right, we just completely miss the real goal, which I think is the experiencing of it, the actual being there, living it, and ding, 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 enjoying it, appreciating it, being present for it, right? The good parts, the bad parts, the ups, the downs, the parts that really blow your mind, the parts that like shock you and confuse you, the really being there for it, not just being there to judge it and to punish yourself and punish those around you who maybe are getting in the way of this vision and this concept and this idea and this really intangible thing that you think you need to create in order to get a feeling that you don't already have. 
And that's the whole lie, right? Whatever you want to feel because of your wedding, you can feel right now. You have access to all of your emotions right now. And so trying to use your wedding as some kind of goal or test or hoop to jump through or a way to prove yourself, right? So many women use their wedding as a way to prove their taste level, prove their friendship status, prove their relationship status, prove their wealth, prove their style, prove their sense of worth. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And we've talked about that on this podcast. That's a cultural thing. And that's a female thing in this culture. And we internalize that though. And then we are the harshest to our own selves about it. That's what is the worst. There is sort of cultural pressures that exist and that can be hard to navigate. But the worst is when we internalize them and use them against ourselves sort of unconsciously. And we think that those voices are like, oh, it's just my intuition telling me to spend more money, lose more weight, add more people to the bridal party. Like, right? We think that like, that's our inner knowing when so many times that is not our inner knowing. That is completely internalized bullshit from the culture. And it doesn't make you wrong. I do this all the time, especially with motherhood. It's like there's so much noise around what it means to be a good mother. And then you lose all sense of like your own knowingness of how to be the mother that you can be to the child that you have, right? And it's the same with your relationship to your wedding. And it's a great time to stop and reflect and realize this is not a test. You can't get it right because you can't get it wrong. And you are not meant to achieve this or accomplish this or check this box or prove yourself. Your wedding isn't meant for any of those things. Your wedding is meant to celebrate, enjoy, pause, connect, elevate, sanctify your relationship, like make it formal legalize it, put it in this really special new chapter. Like that's what it's really about. And the rest of it is all for fun. You can make it as over the top and wonderful and fabulous as you want to make it. As long as you aren't then using all of those sort of status markers as a way to punish yourself and tell you that you're not enough and it wasn't enough and you won't be enough because I'm telling you it's a road to nowhere. It is a treadmill and you can't get off. You're the only one. You put yourself on it and you've got to take yourself off of it. So if you are listening to this today, this is your message. Your wedding is not a test. Your wedding is to be experienced. Let yourself be celebrated And all of that is not going to happen from like, well, did I get enough text messages? Did I get enough congratulations? Were people happy enough? Did people like it enough? Did people like share it enough? That's not the metric here. The metric is you. Did you feel the joy? Were you completely in the moment? Are you proud of yourself? That's the metric. And that, just knowing that and remembering that, there is no authority. There is no God of good weddings right? None of that matters. In the short term, it might find you can get featured on this magazine or whatever. And if there's a strategy behind why you're doing that and you like your reasons, go for it. I am not against any of those things, but I am against chasing an empty, elusive, ghost-like concept of winning at your wedding. Like that's not what this is. And it's just an important reminder because much of our society is set up to achieve, win, accomplish. And I just want to make sure we shake that mindset a little when it comes to our wedding. So I hope this helps you. Please reach out. Let me know with whatever questions, issues you're dealing with. Send me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. I am Kara the Bridal Coach on both of those places. And do not forget to book your bridal session. It is the most important wedding prep that you can do. And until next time, I am sending you nothing but bridal bliss.